Early on, we'll dial Ace King offsuit on the button. I've included the timestamp in the top right corner, which I'll do for each hand so you can better follow how the session has progressed. I opened at 30. The big blind doesn't believe that I've got a monster. He three bets to 120 and has about the same size stack as me. I'm not in the mood to mess around. We're gonna four bet. 360. Within the first 10 minutes of playing, we're already all in. We don't even have a pair. We're probably going to be behind or chopping at best. The flop comes jack four deuce with two hearts. That's not good for us. We don't even have a heart. We're going to need a lot of help, and we only have two cards to come. The dealer puts out the ace of hearts on the turn. Suddenly, our hand has gone from having very little value to having a ton with top top. Still, we don't want to see another heart come out on the river. Instead, we see the deuce of clubs. It seems like we should be good. But look at how eager the opponent is to show his cards. Luckily, he's got the same hand. Drop it up. I almost had a heart attack, and the only money that I make is half of this small blind. Okay, you can play that. Never mind. I risk everything, and I make nothing. The entire small blind goes to the opponent. What? <laughs> That's it. I can't be at a table where the dealer's favoring other players over me. There's another 510 table. It looks like it has more action, and there are plenty of straddles. Everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. I've been punched, but I've still got some fight in me. We pick up Jack-10 offsuit in the under the gun straddle. A player in middle position raises to 90. He's a viewer named Adam. My read on him is that he's a little on the tighter side. The big blind calls. He's on the other side of the spectrum and is getting involved as frequently as possible. I call for 70 more with a hand that has potential. It can be tricky to play though. We're going three ways to the flop. It comes Jack-9-6 rainbow. We've got top pair and a backdoor straight draw. The big blind checks. I check to the preflop aggressor. He gathers some chips and bets 120. This is a small bet on a board with a lot of straight draws possible. It doesn't necessarily indicate a lot of strength. The opponent could just be taking a stab at it. The big blind flats. If he had two pair or better, he'd probably raise rather than give me a great price to call with a variety of hands behind him. I could easily have the best hand right now. I don't want to call, have an overcard come out and have to give up. I want to win this immediately because the board probably won't get too much better for me. I raised to 400 and sort of turned my hand into a bluff. The middle position opponent sits back in his chair to get into a better position, more suitable for a hard tank. I'm certainly representing a much stronger hand than what I've actually got, but in my range of all the sets and suited two pair combinations, I have good card removal, making it extremely unlikely that I'm up against a set of jacks, which is the only really strong hand I envision the middle position opponent betting 120 with when he has two opponents and there's a coordinated flop. Since he's on the tighter side, he might be willing to fold a better jack or potentially even a hand like Queens. If he calls, I'll probably give up and try to get the showdown as cheaply as possible unless I significantly improve. The middle position player folds. The big blind folds right away as well. I'm happy with the outcome. I get kind of a hybrid bet through. I imagine that we had a better hand than the big blind, so we denied equity there. And if we listen really closely through another conversation that's going on at the table, the middle position player asks us a question implying that he folded a better hand. I couldn't beat Top Top. I'm glad to have dodged a bullet in order to take down the pot. Perhaps this is the start of a comeback. A half hour goes by before we're dealt ace ten of hearts in the big blind. Some people are away from the table, so it's six handed. The hijack opens at 30. That's our boy Adam. The small blind calls. He's the one who doubled up through me with ace queen earlier. I check my watch. It's definitely time to get some revenge against him. We call for 20 more. The flop is an absolute dream. It comes king, queen, jack with two hearts. We flop the straight with a royal flush redraw. Small blind checks. I'm trying to contain my excitement. I check with hopes that the hijack has a piece of the board. That doesn't seem to be the case. He checks back. The turn is the eight of clubs. We still have the nuts. Small blind checks. I don't want to scare anyone. I don't want this to check through again either. I bet 30 to induce a light call or a raise. The hijack immediately folds. We might just win a small one. That's often the case when you have the world since other people tend not to have much. Hold that thought though. The small blind comes in out of nowhere with a check raised to 120. Remember in the vlog right before this one? I got check raised twice on the turn after check through on the flop. Both times the opponent was bluffing. That could be what's going on here, especially since I bet so small. It could have looked like I was just taking a stab at it with second pair. Since I'm not worried at all about more hearts coming and I want to keep my opponent's bluffs in, I fly in order to set the trap. I've made four or five royal flushes in my life. Those were all before I started the YouTube channel. I actually haven't yet filmed a straight flush. I'd like that to change. The river is a heart. It's just the seven of hearts though. 
We've improved to a different hand that's still the nuts. Our opponent doesn't look to be slowing down either. He fires for 240. This isn't gonna save that price for long. 700. Nice. There's no snap hold. The small blind goes into the tank. He must actually have a strong hand like two pair or better. If that's the case, the heart on the river was a really bad card for me because I might have been able to make more money by raising the turn or if the river was a complete blank like the three of spades. The way the hand was played, it seems like I could have been on a heart draw, allowing the small blind to get away from whatever he has relatively cheaply. The story that I'm telling that I've got a monster is convincing, mostly because it's true. The small blind just has to see it to believe it. He calls. We show him that we had the best hand the whole way. As a side note, if we didn't have two hearts, I would have raised a turn for sure to get as much money in at that point as possible in order to deny equity in case the opponent had hearts. Almost another hour goes by and we're dealt King Queen offsuit under the gun plus one. I raised a 30, the button calls, he's a brand new player at the table, they're coming in fresh since it's almost eight in the morning. The small blind calls, we're going three ways to the flop, it's King King seven with two diamonds, we've got trips and a multi-way pot. The small blind checks, I bet 50, I think that's a good price. The button doesn't like it at all though, he raises to 150. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. He'll never have ace king and it's tough to imagine him raising right away with king seven or pocket sevens for a full house. The small blind folds. There aren't a lot of kings left for my opponent to have. It's likely that he's semi bluffing with a diamond draw or this is some kind of let me see where I'm at that with pocket eights or something. I call so that the opponent won't be too frightened. The turn is the deuce of hearts. It's a brick. I'm worried that if I check, the button will check back now that he knows that I had a hand strong enough to withstand his flop raise. I lead for 200. I'm hoping that it'll look like a weak blocker bet. Maybe the opponent will think that I'm trying to get to the river cheaply with a hand like tens or a flush draw. The button could raise for value with the worst king or as a bluff with a variety of hands. He looks confused. I don't blame him. He just calls. I'm not sure what to make of it. The river is the six of hearts. It shouldn't have helped my opponent. He has 1100 left in his stack. I'm contemplating what to do. There's almost no way that he has a better king than me or a full house. If he had trip kings, he'd call a jam. If he has a pair of any kind, he may even call an all-in since my line has been so bizarre and it could look like I'm overbet shoving with a missed flush draw as a bluff. If he had a missed flush draw, he won't be able to call a bet of any size and checking to him is the right play so that maybe he'll bluff off his stack. If I check and he checks back, that wouldn't be good. I swing for the fences and announce that most of the time people fold when I overbet river for value. Not today. The opponent snap calls. We turn over trips with the queen. The opponent doesn't have that beat. He shows that he had a king as well. His kicker isn't as good though. We played that one in a strange way that ultimately pays off huge. Not only do we win a massive pot to stack the opponent, but after hours of being in the hole, we're completely unstuck and actually have a profit over $1,000 on the session. Shortly after, we pick up pocket sevens on the button. Under the gun plus one raises to 30. A player in middle position calls. The cutoff calls. I'd like to play. I call. The big blind calls. He was the opponent in the previous hand. We're going five ways to the flop. It comes queen seven five with two clubs. We have middle set and four opponents. Unfortunately, it checks to me. No one's seen any free cards. I bet 120. I chose the larger sizing since there are a couple draws out there. There are several opponents and I don't have a queen. Someone or multiple people should be able to call a bet for that amount. It's too bad for us. We don't get a call. Something better happens. The big blind puts in a check raise to 300. This is such a good spot to be in because this player didn't 3-bet preflop like I imagine he would with pocket queens. His range is capped at a set of fives or a two pair hand at best. It folds back to me. We're playing deep stack poker. I've got a decision to make. Do I flat, hoping that the turn is a blank in order to make my move then? The risk with this option is that the turn could be something like the eight of clubs, which might either give my opponent the lead, or if he has two pair or a set of fives, it could freeze him and make it so that he's no longer willing to put in as much money. If I raise right now, it could scare him off either a one pair hand like king queen or a semi bluff. I fight off my urge to pile in money. Instead, I take the patient approach, calling for 180 more. The turn is the jack of hearts. It's great because we still have what's essentially the nut since the opponent will never have turned a set. I'm expecting to see a big bet from him. Surprisingly, he bets 300 again. I don't know what hand it makes sense for the big blind to bet this amount with. Maybe he just wanted to see where he was at on the flop with a one pair hand like king queen or queen 10. And now that he's gotten called, he doesn't know what to do and is trying to get to showdown cheaply. I'm no longer going to wait around though. The time is now to make a move. I raised to 800. This should look odd since I didn't put in a third bet on the flop. A jack comes out, I faced a small bet, and suddenly I want to raise to play a massive pot. 
it might look like I'm trying to pull off a bluff with some sort of draw. If he somehow has a better set, that's just unlucky for me. I'm never folding to a shove, even though it'd be for piles. The big blind eventually comes to his decision. All right. Once, twice. Up to you. Okay. We're in a pot well over $4,000 with a set on a very draw heavy board and we're running it twice. If I win this, I'll be up $3,500. If I lose, I'll once again be stuck for the day and I won't have any energy to keep playing after a long session of battling. I'll have to book a loss. Everything comes down to two river cards. The first one is the four of spades. At least no club gets there, but eight six makes it straight. The second river is the four of hearts. Basically, the only hand that I'm worried about being up against is 8-6 of clubs. Guess what we're up against? The opponent has ace-6 of clubs. He bricked the ace high flush. We win both runouts for the biggest pot that I've won in months. Waiting until the turn to raise pays off huge. Not only do we stack the opponent for a ton of chips, but it's possible that we could have gotten it in against him on the flop. And if we ran it twice at that point, he potentially could have made a straight or a flush on the second runout since we would have seen one more card come out. Sometimes it's tough to battle back from being down 1500. Not only did we recoup that amount, with this enormous pot coming towards us, we're up 3500. It's been a $5,000 swing in our direction. This is the most money that I've had in front of me in a 510 game at Bellagio ever. I've never had this much big stack energy. 